Thanks so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I am a big believer in lifelong learning, whether it's exploring new skills or developing my current ones. I just love getting creative and Skillshare has been the perfect place for me. It's an online community with thousands of inspiring classes. There are no ads, so you can really focus on just letting your creativity take you anywhere you need to go. You can join live classes where you can connect with popular teachers and work alongside other students, or you can just work on your own time. It's very flexible. Skillshare is always launching new premium classes, and right now I am in love with Jonathan Van Ness's class, The Ultimate Self-Care Playbook. Jonathan is from Queer Eye, and I've always wanted to get complete makeover from them and this is sort of my way of doing that. Under Jonathan's guidance I have been able to create a self-care planner where I am able to really explore any limiting beliefs that I have and rewire them into positive affirmations. I have been able to learn how to accept failures, to forgive myself, how to treat myself to a home spa moment, and so much more. I highly recommend his class. So if you are interested, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link below will get a free one month trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. I really hope you like it. Thank you so much for waiting. Welcome back. How can I help you today? Yeah. Hmm. Something wrong with your eyes? Okay, tell me more. So you're saying that you can't see as clearly as you did about a year ago. Hmm. So some kind of vision loss. Not quite. Okay, tell me more. Hmm. And has this ever happened before? It's our first time. Okay. So progressive. They seeing a little less clearly. Specifically in the center. Okay. 
Do you have trouble recognizing people's faces? Hmm. That's a little bit harder, okay. What about in terms of reading? Are you able to read printed words clearly? You're having a little trouble, especially in dim light. Okay. Do you have any blind spots in your vision? Anywhere at all, whether it's in the center, the center or in the periphery of your vision? No blind spots, okay. Do you see any blurry areas in your field? So, any waves or any kinds of floaters? What about double vision? No. Have you been having any headaches? Any nausea or vomiting? Okay. No headaches, nausea or vomiting. And this is your first time having these symptoms. I see. Yes, I can imagine it might be a bit scary for you. Our vision is so incredibly precious and I guarantee you I'm going to do everything in my power to help. Okay? Great. All right. So I'm just going to ask you a few more questions. So do you have any family history of vision problems? Okay, so your grandfather was a little hard of seeing around seven years old, okay. Did he ever get a diagnosis? No? Okay. And I see that you don't wear glasses, do you? Perhaps when driving? No? No, okay. No vision problems at all in the past. All right. Do you have any other medical conditions? No. Do you take any medications? No. Okay, other than Advil for your, your lower back, sometimes you have a bit of lower back pain. Yeah, and if you ever want me to take a look at your lower back, I'd be more than happy to or even refer you to a physiotherapist or chiropractor. Just let me know. Okay, great. Are you taking any supplements? A multivitamin? Okay. Do you smoke? Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, that's not easy. That's not easy quitting smoking and being able to do so for the past two years. I'm incredibly proud of you. Yeah, give yourself a big pat on the back for that. That is an incredible decision that you've made that is impacting your health in a very positive way, I'm sure. Do 
you take any recreational drugs? No. Okay. What about alcohol? Okay. And how have your stress levels been recently? From 1 to 10, 10 being the worst stress that you've ever experienced. About 8. I'm really sorry to hear that. I can understand that. Yeah, and I know it's been really hard lately for small businesses to get back on their feet. If it helps at all, I can certainly promote your business to my patients. We can even put some flyers at the front desk. Yeah. I'm really sorry. I wish I could do more. Thank you for sharing. Alright, so stress levels. How about exercise? Have you been able to exercise at all? Not so much. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And what about sleep? Hmm. Not the best. I hear you. Hmm. Yeah, our worries, our everyday worries can certainly keep us from falling asleep. I can understand that. Sometimes I have trouble going to sleep as well when I'm thinking about my patients and you know, their health struggles, but I, it's really important to create a space in your bedroom where you can just go back to and you can just leave everything else behind at the door as soon as you get into your bedroom. That's your safe space. I can also recommend some guided meditations, perhaps even some ASMR videos that can help you get into a state of relaxation and away from all the stresses of daily life. It can certainly benefit you for sure. Yeah. Yes, and I can imagine that your eyes have been worrying you as well. Well, let me go ahead and do a comprehensive eye exam on you so we can figure out what the root cause of this eye issue is, okay? If you don't mind, I do want to palpate your eyelids and the surrounding structures just to see if there's any swelling, any inflammation, any nodules, anything like that. So please, if you don't mind closing your eyes. Feel these lacrimal structures here, the dots and the glands. Okay, then under your eyes a little bit. I'm just gonna feel around there as well. Okay, then right. 
around your eyebrows. Just see over here. Okay. Just gonna feel around your nose as well. If you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and palpate your lymph nodes as well. Start with the pre and post auricular lymph nodes. Just going to brush your hair back, okay? when we have infections in the eyes. These are the first lymph nodes that are impacted, so I want to make sure that I'm paying attention to these ones. I'm just going to come behind your ears. Have you ever had any injuries to your head? No? Okay. Good. Just feeling along the neck here, just palpating on either side of the sternocleomastoid, the, uh, the cervical chains here. No pain or tenderness? Okay, great. All right, so it looks like you are absolutely free of any lymphadenopathy, which means swollen and enlarged lymph nodes. Okay, so that's good. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the surface of your eyes. Next, I want to just inspect your eyes with this pen light here. And I want you to just look straight ahead at my nose, okay? I'm going to just introduce some tangential lighting and take a look at first the cornea of each eye. issues of any clouding of the cornea at all, any tears, anything like that. Hmm. Okay, that looks fine. Now let's, let's take a look at the iris. Just want to see if there's any shadows here that might some issues with the iris. Or there might be any swelling, any inflammation. Hmm. 
No. Nothing wrong with the iris. Okay. What about this, Clara? I want you... I can look at the sclera and the... Conductive... Now, so let me just first look at one's directly on the eyeball. No signs of inflammation there. Okay, I want you to look up. Just kind of pull your eyelids down slightly so that I can take a look at that. Conjunctive there. Okay. Now I want you to look down. Okay, look up here as well. Okay, great. Now let me do some pupil reactionary testing. I'm going to place my hand right here in the center. I'm going to add some lighting here. Take a look to see if your pupils are constricting, which they are. I'm going to look on the other side to see if there's consensual constriction. And now, let's look at the direct. Good, intact, as well as consensual. Okay, great. Alright. I'm also going to measure the pupils to see if they're asymmetry. So I'm just looking here. Four millimeters on that side and four millimeters on this side. Great. Let's do near reaction test. I want you to look at the center here, okay? And then look behind me. Then back of my pen. Behind me. It's not very clear. I see, yeah. Okay, I want you to keep looking at the pen. Look at the pen. Yes, so for that, your oculomotor nerve and your optic nerve have been tested and, and they're working quite well. However, you did have trouble really seeing this clearly, huh? Okay, got it. Okay, so I want to do some peripheral visual fields testing. I want you to cover this eye right here and look into my eye over here, okay? Let me know when you're able to see my fingers, the wiggling tips of my fingers. Just let me know when you see them. Good. Good. Very good. Keep staring at me. Good. Good. Okay, let's switch eyes. So your peripheral visual fields were fully intact. Were you able to see the wiggling tips of my fingers quite clearly? Any blurred vision there at all? No? Okay. 
I do have a diagnosis that I suspect, but I do want to do quite a few more tests before I let you know what that is. And even if that were the case, even if my suspected diagnosis is true, there will need to be further testing in order to fully diagnose you. But in the meantime, I don't want you to worry. Okay, let's just work through the rest of the tests. So now let's move on to the Snellen chart, which will help to figure out your visual acuity. Okay. Alright. Just standing up here and okay, making sure it's 14 inches away. There we are. Alright, so we're going to start off with your left eye. I want you to take a look at the snow and turn. Let me know what's the lowest line that you can see clearly. Okay. So, good. You're able to see. So I'll just adjust it there. Nine. Mm hmm. Three. Yep. Seven. Eight. Two. vision there. Okay. Now let's try your other eye. I'm just going to cover it here, okay? Are you able to see that same line or perhaps the one lower than it? Hmm. So, that line here, are you able to see it? It's blurry. Try the one above it. It's blurry. Okay, work your way up. Mm hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, so just as expected, with your right eye, you seem to be unable to see the center of what you're focusing on clearly. So in terms of the style chart, you weren't able to really identify really much of the numbers except for the top ones. I know that could be frustrating, I know. We're going to get some answers pretty soon. I want to look into your eyes with the ophthalmoscope, okay? So this is my pan-optic ophthalmoscope. So I want to take a look close up inside your eye at your retina. So let's start with your left eye. Just gonna come up close, okay? That looks fairly good. Just take a look at these arteries and veins here and just following along. Do the optic cup and disc. I can't the ratio. The ratio looks good. No signs of glaucoma here. Clear outline, no swelling, no papilledema. I need to take a look at the surrounding retina. This is what I'm most concerned about. Just looking for any any signs of edema here. Any any spots? Okay, so I do see two chosen spots over there. 
move a little closer to the macula. Uh, no signs of hemorrhaging, no signs of infection. Okay, just give you a little break. How are you feeling? So far so good with this eye. A little closer, okay. Can you look directly into my ophthalmoscope? into my ophthalmoscope again. Mm. Okay. The good news is your left eye looks okay. There's a few juice and spots, so it is at a bit higher risk of age-related macular degeneration, but there are no other signs of retinopathy. Alright, I'm going to take a look at your other eye. seem to be some juice and spots that uh, are a little concerning. Okay. And the rest of the retina look okay. They look fine. Just, okay. And again, I want you to take a look directly into my ophthalmoscope, okay? Okay. Hmm. I see, I see. Okay. I'll just give you a little break again. I know. The light is quite bright. Yes, so my diagnosis does seem to be correct. It does look like you have age-related macular degeneration. Of course, we're going to have to confirm that with a bit more testing. Yes, of course. Uh, let me just record the findings first and I will answer any questions that you have. Okay.
Juice and spots. I know you must have a lot of questions. I just want to do one more test, okay? Just one more, and then I'll answer any questions you have. All right, so we're just going to do the Amsler grit test. Let me cover up this eye first. First, are you able to see the four corners of the grit? Good. Now, can you see the center dot? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to focus on that center dot for me. Do you see any, any waves in the lines at all? Any, th any distortions of any kind? Are you able to see the four corners? Good, good. And yeah, look straight at the center. You're able to see the four corners, uh-huh. Focus on that dot. Are you able to see it clearly? No. Are you seeing any of these lines go wavy or blurry or anything like that? Just the blur in the center, but no wavy lines. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So good news first. It doesn't look like it's wet macular degeneration because you did not see any wavy lines on the Amsler grid or very little at all, just the blur in the center with your right eye. Yeah, so that is good news. But the bad news is it does look like you have dry macular degeneration and there's some juice and spots there in your retina, especially on the right side. There's a little bit on the left side as well. So we're going to keep paying attention to that. I do want to order a few tests. So I want to order the optical coherence tomography to just kind of assess the subretinal fluid if there's any um, additional fluid there and to also look at the retinal thickness. Just because with the fundoscopy there are things that we can't see, for instance, the thickness of the retina, right? So I do want to make sure that we ordered that, and there's also a few angiography tests that I want to order, okay? All right, so I will have that requisition available for you, and you can go ahead and get that done at an eye specialist, okay? All right, so we'll make sure to do those. Mm. So when it comes to age-related macular degeneration, it tends to start around the age of 60. That's the biggest risk factor. Other risk factors include obesity, smoking, unfortunately, as well as um, poor diet. So we're not entirely sure exactly what the causes are. There it tends to be a strong family history component, as well as a hereditary component, which Perhaps your grandfather also had this condition, and that might explain some of it. But the good news is that we're able to monitor it quite regularly. I'm actually going to print off one of these Amsler grids for you so that you can continue to monitor your own condition to see if you ever see 
those wavy lines at all. And if you do, please report back to me immediately. But this condition does deteriorate over a long period of time and we're going to do our best to help control it, okay? So you will maintain your peripheral vision. It's the central vision that will deteriorate over time because that's what the macula is responsible for. It is responsible for that focal vision. And I know that it, it can be really difficult mentally and emotionally, so please let me know if you need to see a, a counselor, a therapist, I can certainly refer you to one. But in the meantime, we can do some diet changes, some lifestyle changes, reduce your stress a little bit, just try to improve overall the quality of your life and see if that might even impact your, your eye health as well. We can do everything in our power to help, okay? All right, so I will have that requisition available for you, please. If you have any questions at all, ask me, and I'll be seeing you soon, okay? All right, take care. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much for putting your health first and coming to me when you've noticed that there was an issue. Thanks so much.